my name is Birdbird, and today we are talking about rigging! Woo! So today is not really a tutorial about what to do. It's more about what not to do. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over some methods that I've been seeing around that are not bad. Like, they're not toxic. They're just a bit old. And like some newer method or perhaps better to do now than what you would have done before. So yeah, this video is like, what not to do anymore. So let's jump right to it. So I'm gonna use my bird ray here to show you a few little things. So first, one thing that is super, super important that I cannot stress enough. Do not daisy chain your pieces. But what is daisy chain, you may ask? Well, in electric science terms, it's something that has to do with current and how it's like blowing into each other. Everything blows up, right? So I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I do rigging and animation. So I'm going to show you what daisy chaining is in rigging. So daisy chaining a rig is something that's going to look like this. So you know, right from the start, it kind of look okay. And by the way, focus on the pegs here in the drawing, right? This part is fine. This part is really cool. Like focus on this part. By the way, this little green box, it disappears when I'm in render. Ooh, if you want to know how to do that, you can just use a visibility node and um, have fun with it. But anyway, that's for another video. Woo! Today we are focusing on what's going on with these pegs here. All right, so it looks okay. Meaning that, you know, you can move your iris little pizza slice here. You can move your pupil. Okay, that's great. I can move my whole eye. Yeah, that works. I can move, I can move the whole eye here. Yeah, okay, it works. But what if, what if your animation asks? for like changing the size of just the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can't because because moving the eyeball will also move the pupil and also move the highlight. That's what we call daisy chain. It's like this one goes in this and this and this. So if you move this one, all of them are gonna move. If you move this one, all of them are gonna move. Like for an eye, okay, sometimes it works. But what if you do that for an arm? That means that you cannot do any foreshortening except if you like redraw. And even then, you won't be able to move the hand because if you move forearm, in the hand, everything is tied together and it sucks. Like, do not daisy chain your rig. It's like one of the worst thing you can do. Unless you're working on a PSA that takes like two days to animate and you want to be quick. Like, you know, this works sometimes. But usually, if you do that in your rig, you're gonna have a bad time animating for many reasons. So now that we agree that daisy chaining is bad, let's go see what you should actually do. So what you should actually do is called a grounded hierarchy. So what it does, it allows you to move your pizza slice like we did before, to move your pupil, to move the whole eye and then to move the eye and the eyebrow together. So it's kind of the same as what we had before, but the difference is that now if I want to change the size of the eyeball here, I can just click on the peg of the eye shape and shrink it without affecting any other things. By the way, remember when it's pink, it means it's your drawing. Make sure you're not putting keyframes on your drawing. To prevent putting keyframes on your drawing, make sure that when you're done creating your drawings, you click here, set properties of many layer, and that you prevent them from being animatable by pressing off. This means that you cannot put keyframes on your drawings and the keyframes will go directly to the peg that is right next to them. This is great because then you don't counter animate and animate on your drawings and your peg at the same time, which is one of the biggest nightmare in animation. All right, so, so that's why you ground your peg. So how do you ground your hierarchy? Usually you'll have all your drawings, you select them, you do Control Shift P to give all of them a peg. And you know, now you just put the pivot point at the right area. And you shape them. By the way, I always put my pivot point for my eye shapes right here, just because it's easier than to stretch them instead of having the pivot point in the center, which would be freaking annoying because you know, who stretches these eyes like that, right? And then you always have to move it. So, you know, chances are most of the time you want your pivot point to be right here. Amazing. So once you have your ground, since you know that your pegs don't have any animation on, uh, you will be able to copy paste them. But before, make sure that your pegs are separate. You should never, ever, ever, ever use 3D path peg in a rig for many reasons that I'm tired of explaining. So if you want to know why, watch my other rigging videos because I've said that like five times. So then you take them, you go here, you make them separate, super freaking important. And then you control C, control V them so that they have the same pivot point and you can only copy paste them because they have no animation at all. Like, like they don't have any information here. Yay. So then once you have your ground, you can start to do what we call build up the hierarchy. So the pie here will get controlled by the pupil. So instead of doing this, which is daisy chaining, which is bad, we're gonna keep these at ground level and we're just gonna build up by copy pasting. And the only reason why you can copy paste is because you were 100% sure your peg has never gotten any animation. And then you just tie them like that. What if you wanna move the eye shape as well? Well, you copy paste your eye shape peg, you put it here and then you attach them together like that. So it's gonna create a ground and a staircase that goes up. And then the eyebrow, I mean, I'm just gonna copy paste it. And then for the eyebrow, I'm not gonna copy paste the eyebrow peg because this doesn't make sense for the whole eye. 
I'm just going to copy paste my eye shape peg instead, put it here. And I'm going to keep it aligned because I want to make sure that I know what the pivot point for these peg is. And it's the same pivot point as the eye shape. And I'm going to go get my eyebrow, which means that now I have my little pie shape here. If I go up, I have my pupil, my eye shape, and my eyebrow and eye together, which I can then move to my heart's content. But if I want to make some little adjustment, I can still go get my eye shape. Maybe stretch it because my bird is surprised. Or maybe take my pie here and like move it to the other side and maybe stretch just my pupil and not the pie. Because sometimes you want to have your bird be super kawaii but still keep the small highlight. Alright, so just for more control, don't forget to always have a grounded hierarchy. Do not daisy chain. Alright, so I hope you had fun for today and that's all. That's it. So I'm gonna see you next week for more of information about rigging and like not to do and what to do and, and how to not have a painful time in animation. Yay! Have a nice week. See you next week. Bye.